Hello, Viking Nation. It is first chapter Friday. And today we're going to be reading just, I have a sticky note over the cover of the book, Just My Luck. Um, this is by Cammie McGovern. I noticed it on my cart this week and I thought, oh, I haven't read that. And so I picked it up and I started kind of flipping through it and reading a couple of chapters. And I think it's going to be fantastic. So here we go. Here's chapter one. My mom has a theory that when bad things happen, you should think about someone else's problems and try to help them. Like, even if you're losing a soccer game terribly, you should try to help the poor guy wearing glasses on the other team who just fell down, things like that. One problem with mom's theory is that my older brother, George, is autistic, which means he can't really think about anyone else, much less help them. The other problem is, is that ever since the summer and what had happened to dad, I don't think anyone else has more problems than we do. I wonder what happened to dad. What happened to dad this summer wasn't my fault. The first night the mom came home from the hospital, she said to me, and she began saying it ever since, which of course makes me feel like it was my fault, at least a little bit. The morning that it happened, dad asked me if I wanted to go to the high school to work on the bike riding, which is embarrassing because I'm in the fourth grade now, and of course I can ride a bike, sort of. I just had a hard time starting and stopping. It also makes me a little nervous slowing down to make turns. I wasn't always this way. I could ride a bike when I was in second grade like everyone else. Maybe I kept my training wheels on longer than the other kids, but eventually I let my dad take them off and I made it up and down the street a bunch of times. Dad jogged next to me, mom taking pictures. I would have said it was a fine back rider until the end of that summer when we had a bike parade at our block party and we have 12 kids on our block, most of them younger than us, so every bike was decorated with streamers and pom-poms. Stephanie of the street is a year younger than I am, but she had taped pinwheels to her handlebars, which was such a good idea. I was jealous, especially when I saw how they spun like crazy when she rode fast. All I had for decorations were a few streamers flapping and the two balloons tied to my handlebars. They weren't much doing, but they weren't doing much. Anyone could see Stephanie's pinwheels were going to win, which made me so mad. I pedaled really hard and fast, bam, right into a parked car. I flew into the street and the whole bike parade stopped so everyone could get off their bikes and gather around in a circle to see if I was still alive. I was, barely. Afterward, my older brother, Martin, who's in the ninth grade now, kept saying it didn't look that bad. It was just a little funny, kind of like a um, sight gag. He was trying to make me feel better, but it wasn't funny at all. For a long time afterward, I didn't get on my bike. Even when Martin and his friends built a bike jumping out in the wood planks and cement blocks, I pretended my foot was hurt so I wouldn't have to do it. When the When they did races up the street, I would say I heard mom calling me so no one would ask why I wasn't racing. The week before school started this year, Dad called me outside and he had an idea. I'm going over for a run at the high school. No one will be there. The track there is a great place to practice riding your bike. No curbs to worry about. No cars to run into. He clapped his hands like coaches do at halftime when their team is losing. I don't know, Dad, I said. I felt bad for him. When he was a boy, Dad went to prep school where everyone had to wear ties to class and play a sport every season, if they, even if they were terrible at it. I hated it. I wouldn't wish that on any of you, he always tells us, but sometimes I wonder if he wishes his sons were a little more like the jocks he has never been like. Dad has been an assistant coach on all of our soccer teams, which means his hardest job every year has been thinking up new words to describe our performances when he hands out end-of-the-year trophies. Benny has worked so hard with the skills he has, he'll say, or Benny has been trying to reach the new level of playing this year he almost has. He says these things because the trophy ceremonies you're not allowed to say the truth, which is Benny hasn't touched a ball in the game once all season. He also can't say Benny seems remarkable, uninterested in this sport, and the spite of all the years I've put in as his assistant coach. I think if Dad and his secret dream come true, he'd have one of us be surprisingly good athletes so he could stand on the sidelines of the games and say, it didn't come for me. I'm a terrible athlete. Instead, he has my brother Martin, who plays basketball, because this year he's the tallest boy in the ninth grade, but even Martin will admit he's a terrible shooter and anyone in their right mind doesn't throw the ball to him. He also has George, who plays in the Special Olympics basketball, where it's okay to just carry the ball from one end of the court to the other without dribbling at all, and me, Benny, who can only ride a bike if someone is there to help him start and stop. I don't think that sounds like such a good idea, Dad, I told him after he suggested bike riding at the high school track. I don't know if you realize this, but I hadn't ridden my bike once since the bike parade. I'd walk my bike places, and when I get there, I pretended I'd rode, but I hadn't actually gotten on my bike and pedaled it since the crash. It'll be fun, Dad said. I'll be right there running my laps. 
The way he said this, I could tell that he didn't know that I hadn't been on the bike in two years. Mom came outside and they looked at each other like they talked about it ahead of time. Like they were both really worried about this, which made me feel terrible. Okay, I said, I guess I could try. Mom hugged me the right way. That's wonderful, Benny. We're so proud of you. That afternoon, we got out of the track early while it was still deserted, which was lucky because it turned out that I was even worse than I remembered. Walking over dad told me there was an old saying about how you have to get right back on the bike when you fall off of it. Or maybe that's a horse, he said. But the point is, you shouldn't wait a year to get back onto whatever you fell off of. That was a nice idea. Except the first time I tried pedaling, I veered right off the track and got onto the grass. I don't know if it was true for other people, but whenever I fall off my bike, I'm always sure for about 30 seconds that I have broken my leg. There are so many bars that could crush a leg that I could never believe it didn't happen. I lay there for a while looking up at the sky, waiting to experience what a broken leg feels like. It's okay, I told myself. If it's broken, I won't have to ride this stupid bike again for a very long time. Then came the bad news. Looks like you're okay, Dad said. Good to go. Right back in the saddle. He leaned over. His face was a little red from the effort of staying upbeat. You're okay, right? I, I, I think so. Super. Why don't I hold the seat while you start pedaling? It's embarrassing to be nine years old and have your dad hold your bike seat while you climb on. It's also embarrassing to have him run beside you screaming, you're veering, you're veering, make your adjustment. But here was the surprise. Once I get going, I was fine. Better than fine. I flew around the track, not any fast. I made it around one whole lap while Dad watched me, clapped and cheered. He was right. The track was a great place to practice. I didn't have to worry about running into anything except painted lines on the ground. I got my speed up and practiced staying in between two lanes, which was hard, so I gave myself two lanes, which wasn't hard at all. I couldn't believe how good I was, especially compared to Dad after he started jogging. Dad didn't really run laps. He shuffled at this strange pace where his legs looked like they were running, but old women walked faster. It's not about speed, he always said, which in this case was certainly true. He looked like he was running backwards compared to me. Poor dad had to sweat and huff and shuffle to get around the track three times, and I lost count after 10. I felt great, like maybe I should become a professional bike rider. Then I saw a woman up ahead on the track running with her dog. The dog was on a leash, but he liked the inside lane, and she liked the outside lane. So there was a line stretched like a fence across the track. If I ran into that line, I was sure I would chop me in half, which made me panic and forget how to stop. I stuck both legs out and yanked the hard hand brakes, which meant I didn't slow down gradually. My bike stopped, but my body did. I flew headfirst over the handlebars. I saw the ground, then the sky, but nothing at all. At the last minute, I guess my dad came up behind to help me. He hit his his head hit my helmet, or maybe my head hit his shoulder and he fell back into the track. We never figured out exactly what happened. When he got up a little dazed, he seemed fine. He was more worried about me. We walked my bike back to the car and drove us home, where he had lined where he had me lie down on the sofa while he looked at the signs of a concussion. Because even though there are three boys in our family, none of us is athletic enough to have ever gotten one. Do you feel like throwing up? He called out from his office. I don't think so. Do you feel dizzy or confused or lethargic? What is lethargic? Tired, sort of. Do you have double vision or vague feeling of, of malice? What's that? Feeling gloomy? A little, I say. And this is the part that is hard for me to think about. While he was still asking my symptoms and reading my concussions on the screen, about concussions on the screen, he slid out of his chair and he hit the floor with a dud. I would never forget that sound, even if I tried to for the rest of my life. Mom heard it too and ran into the room. When she couldn't wake him up, she called out for Martin to please call 911. If you would like to find out what happens to Benny and his dad and the rest of his family, come check out Just My Luck. Have a great day and happy Friday.